Namaste. Well, we got a question today about Jnana Kanda versus Karma Kanda. And I mean, this is typical of Western thought, huh? This versus that, as if they're mutually exclusive. Well, they're not. And really what the Vedas are going after is a synthesis of the two. So I'll explain that as we go on here. Karmakanda is probably what most people think of as the Vedic philosophy. Karma, of course, means work. And kanda means a chapter or a selection of the literature. So if you read the most popular Vedic literature, such as Mahabharata, Bhagavad Gita, or any of the Puranas, you're going to think that karma kanda is all there is. And that's fine in the beginning, because karma kanda is the preliminary purification that you need to prepare for the higher stage of jnana kanda. So just to put this all in perspective, let's take a look at the qualities and contrasts, the differences between the two paths. The focus of Karmakanda is on rituals and duties, whereas Jnanakanda focuses on knowledge and wisdom. As far as scriptural texts, Karmakanda is found mostly in the Sanghitas and Brahmanas of the Vedas, whereas Jnanakanda is pretty much only in the Upanishads. The goal of Karmakanda is worldly prosperity, better rebirth, and heaven, Swarga, after death. While for Jnana Kanda, it's liberation, moksha, from rebirth, samsara. The method of karma kanda is external actions like fire sacrifices and rituals. Whereas for Jnana Kanda, the method is meditation, contemplation, and self-realization. The primary concept of karma kanda is dharma and karma, action. Whereas for Jnana Kanda, it's Jnana, knowledge, and Atman Brahman, unity. And the end result or destination for the Karma Kandiyas is material success and enjoyment in heaven. Whereas for the Jnana Kandiyas, it is self knowledge and eternal liberation. Why is this? Well, it all goes back to the good old four states of consciousness. The ritualistic activities of Karma Kanda are performed in Jagrat, external consciousness. So that which is performed in Jagrat gives results in Jagrat. Whereas beginning with Bhakti and meditation, Raja Yoga, the activities of the Jnana Kanda are internal. And so they give internal results in terms of the change of views, change of mentality, and most importantly, the better destinations than are available to the karma kandiyas. So what are they? Well, of course, self-realization is the ultimate destination. And that is only available through the jnana kanda. Because the actions of jnana kanda are performed in the higher states of Svapna, Sushupti, and ultimately Turiya consciousness. So this is the cause of the differences. Now, a lot of people will try to defend Karma Kanda and say that it also leads to the highest destination, but this is not borne out by the Vedic scriptures. Let me read you some quotes. Placing their faith in sacrificial rites and penances, those ignorant men who covet the fruits of action know not any other good. They fall and return again and again to old age and death. Mundaka Upanishad 127 Through karma, one becomes righteous in this world and goes to the world of gods after death. But one who knows the self goes beyond both righteousness and unrighteousness. Priharara Nyaka Upanishad 1410. 
But as far as jnana khanda in the Upanishads, that which is the subtle essence, this whole world has as itself. That is the true. That is the self. And thou art that. Chandogya Upanishad 687. This is the famous Mahavakya, Tattvamasi. There are two kinds of knowledge to be known, higher, para, and lower, apara. The lower knowledge is the knowledge of the Vedas, rituals, grammar, and sciences, while the higher knowledge is that by which the imperishable Brahman is realized. Mundaka Upanishad 1, 1, 4, and 5. The wise man, having realized by meditation that ancient primeval one, difficult to be seen, deeply hidden, residing in the cave of the heart, seated in the depth, abandons joy and sorrow. Kata Upanishad 1, 2, 15. And finally, this is the most significant one. Those who are devoted to karma alone enter into blind darkness, but those who delight in knowledge alone, they go to even greater darkness. He who knows these two, vidya and avidya, together, attains immortality through vidya by crossing over death through avidya. Isha Upanishad 9 and 11. So this is kind of a cryptic statement. But what it really means is that both paths should be syncretically combined and synthesized into a new path, which you could call the third way, huh? which is neither karma nor jnana, but both together. And when both are used together, then the realization is complete. It's like Buddha would say, the truth lies in the middle, neither one nor the other, but both. So this is what we have always said, that the four states of consciousness are always accessible to everyone, all the time. So it's not just Jagrat when we're awake and Svapna when we're asleep. It's both together, both awake and asleep. And the jnani, the one who realizes consciousness, the one who goes beyond goodness and evil, right and wrong, righteousness and unrighteousness, he can realize this. And of course, this is done through not only sadhana and puja, which is the preparatory stage, but meditation, contemplation, and ultimately realization of Brahman. And that is the key that brings everything together and shows us the real truth, which is not explainable in words. So the scriptures only cover the means or methods by which one can attain these realizations. And they cannot really explain the result. So people get a little confused and they get sectarian minded and narrow minded and they start to say, well, my method is the only one and it leads to the highest result. You know, but then the guy down the street is saying the same thing about something completely different. So the real truth is that all methods have to be realized. All the methods have to be done to the point where you get the result. Then you have the complete realization. And that is complete enlightenment. Aum Tat Sat. Aum Shakti Aum. Aum Namah Shivaya.